Hello and uh, welcome back to our camper conversion build. Um, I think this is number five in the series of updates I've been doing. Um, it's been four or five months since our last update. Um, I've had a change in my work schedule and we've had bad weather and it's just one thing after another. Uh, but we were able to uh, spend a little time the previous week. Uh, we had a festival that we attended that was five days and we needed a place to sleep and a bathroom and all that good stuff. So uh, we were able to get it done just enough where it was kind of livable for those five days. And I think there's there's quite a few changes since the last video. So I thought it'd be worth um, just shooting a quick video and showing you guys what all we got done. And I can kind of walk you through what worked or didn't work or what I liked or didn't like. And you can let me know if you have any questions or comments. And I hope you like what you see. All right, thank you. Okay, just wanted to start off here in the kitchen area and show you the cabinet uh, door faces are on. The sink is officially mounted in place. It is not going anywhere. We got the um, fixture installed there, faucet. It's working great. Um, we did like uh, soft close hinges for for all the doors. Uh, seem to keep them closed pretty well um, driving because we don't have knobs yet installed. The ones we ordered are not going to work so we're going to have to send those back and come up with something else. Um, but the soft closed hinges seem to uh, keep the doors closed pretty well. We got the fridge installed. It's not strapped in place and I have to figure out a way. I've got some ideas but I'm not for sure what I'm going to do just yet. Um, we've got these little, I don't know, safety, I think they're like baby locks or something like that. That work great to keep this door from opening when you're driving down the road. We got the bed put in. It's an 8 inch like foam mattress that we uh, cut down to size. It just, we had to cut a little bit off of the length and the depth or width and man, it's awesome. It fits nice. It's comfortable. We still don't have the uh, stairs that are going to eventually pull from the top of the dog kennel area and fold down. That's something I'm going to have to work on. I've um, got the TV installed, which didn't really matter because we didn't have internet service out where we were camping anyways. Um, we got the little couch nook area, I guess completed. It's about as complete as it's going to be until I'm able to make a table out of that center part. Uh, I think the dog slept on that pretty much the whole time instead of their kennel. Um, the flooring, yeah, let me back up get the flooring. It's, it is like a PVC, like, I don't, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's like a click together floating PVC floor. Um, I haven't put, like you can see there's a gap. I've got to cover those gaps uh, with trim. When we built these, put these walls in, we put them up high enough so that the flooring would slide directly underneath and there would be no need for trim along these walls. Uh, I do need to trim out here and we're going to build the barn door still that's going to slide across there. I have all the hardware and I bought all the uh, wood to build that. Uh, as far as the threshold here we just did a piece of angle aluminum with some liquid nails, a couple screws and we decided to run the flooring a different way the, than the flooring out out here so as to help I guess visually to remind you that there is a step up there I don't know how important that was but I think it still came out pretty nice uh, the toilet is installed here is the the vent hose I think I mentioned in the last video that I was gonna put in um, and it just runs across there and out that side of the wall and Worked great. We had zero smell, no issues. Um, I think it's a 17 gallon black tank. Um, and we were able to use it for, like I said, five days. Uh, no problems. And this is one of the taller, I think, toilets. It's awesome if you're a taller person. I'd recommend it because our scamp had the little short one and it was knees are in your chest when you're trying to use the restroom. Um, one little issue that I wanted to talk about was my water heater plumbing uh, being so close to the toilet. And the problem is that 
the water comes straight from the the inlet and the first tee that it hits i believe it's the first tee might be the second but is right behind this wall there's a tee here and this plumbing runs out for the toilet well, that's a very close run to the water heater and these water heaters are so sensitive to water movement that by flushing the toilet when it's set to the minimum uh, water movement it will actually ignite the water heater so in order to avoid that we had to keep it turned up a little bit um, the really only time you need to even have it on minimum is if you're in like cold cold weather and the water coming into the camper is crazy cold um, that was the only time I think that we figured that we needed it, but I'll just show you for example If I do this, I'm gonna flush the toilet and you, you listen and you'll hear it And it's trying to light so that's a lot of wear and tear every time you flush your toilet So if you just simply move it just a little bit, you can see the difference. I'll flush it again And no problem So just something to keep in mind if you're planning to use one of these water heaters um the distance between the top of this heater and here this is about i don't know nine inches and this puts off quite a bit of heat but when the water is running i can hold my hand here above it for quite some time before it's hot enough that i probably need to pull it away so i was thinking about putting in a decorative piece of aluminum trim here like a flat plate almost to work as kind of a radiator to help diffuse uh or or uh i can't think of the word to i guess absorb some of that heat and uh, keep it off the wood, the directly off the wood, and then the glue that holds these LED lights in it. These LED lights got pretty hot because uh, they're so close to that, that heat. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was the shower. Um, I did have to add another piece of trim that I put right here across this top, and it's just like, you can see it. It's like an angled piece of aluminum, and it helped cap the tops of these uh, corrugated still as they ran up there because it was kind of an ugly seam and there was a little bit of a gap there I was worried about even though I siliconed it really well I was worried that water might be getting back up in there so um, I just ran a bunch of silicone under here and then capped it off <clears throat> and then silicone that to the back so hopefully that will keep any water from getting back up in there um, the other part I was wanted to show you was the drain line for the shower that hooks up to the shower let me run over here and I'll show you real quick is the same as the kitchen so this is a Camco p-trap you see there it just hooks up to a three-quarter inch line and I was a little worried that that might not move enough water for taking the shower but so this is the same size drain line it's three quarter inch and I can run this shower I ran that thing for quite some time it's just um, oxygenic shower head for it's two gallons a minute and my camper is not level that's why some of the water is running more towards the back of the shower but it had absolutely no problem draining enough water Ain't plenty quick enough no issues with that I was I was really concerned about it but said no problems um, I think that's about it for the interior that might be different than the last um, update that we did um, we are using this uh, little um, it's like a convection oven and I gotta tell you this thing's awesome uh, we actually use it in our house now I to take it out of here and put it in our house because it preheats so fast and it cooks so well and it's just my wife and I so there's no reason to preheat our entire oven every time we want to cook something uh, I was going to show you too also how I mounted it to keep it from coming out so if you look to the side if you happen to use the same exact one it's a pretty easy way to, to mount it there's a groove here on both sides so I just you can see here there's a screw sticking up there a screw sticking up there and then you just set the grooves right over the top of those screws and that's it this thing ain't moving had no problems with it going down the road 
and yeah I think that is it for the updates for the interior and run outside real quick and show you what I got done with the uh, tanks the black and gray tanks got the uh, battery also permanently mounted up here up front all I did was cut a couple pieces of angle aluminum screwed them directly into this with some stainless screws and that thing moving for nothing put one on the front one on the back and then I drilled the screws straight through this black tub and then through the angle aluminum there on the bottom pretty simple but it's nice and tight not moving not going anywhere it doesn't wiggle too much all right and here is the clean out for the black tank and then here for the gray tank I really wanted to put them as one one outlet for the for the pair but because of how low the trailer was and where the beams were underneath I was not able to do that um, here hopefully you can see plumbing work um, I put a piece of angle aluminum there as a stop uh, that hose that's sticking out there is the vent hose to allow the tank to vent uh, there are straps that I put there if you're doing this um, I was told by an RV guy to uh, have a little bit of uh, enough room to put like your your four fingers up underneath the straps because as the tank fills with water it'll start to, to swell and sag so you don't necessarily want it too tight um, it's just there as a little extra support the tank itself can support the weight it's just a secondary support so here is the plumbing for the black tank I've got a couple of the three inch hangers and some plumbing straps um, where it ties into the actual tank. Here's the rear galley. That will eventually have a bar top out here with a small tiny sink and a plug to run whatever. Um, these three doorways are going to be storage. Uh, they are going to have cabinet doors on them. There's going to be a, a full slide for the ice chest to slide completely out. Um, here is my fresh water system on board I guess you call it a uh, water tank so it does have the gravity feed which is here but I also teed in from the city line <clears throat> and so there's a valve there if I want to fill up the uh, tank from the city line instead of having to stand there and hold a water hose for 10 minutes or whatever um, Hopefully you can see, I've got everything done here. If you need a better view or have any questions about any of that, let me know. I'll, I'll try to do some better footage. I'm still not done with it. I have to hook up a relay for the uh, switch leg on the, on the pump there because it requires a, I want to say it's a 14 gauge wire and I'm using the C-level switch and it's only like an 18 gauge wire. just can't carry that enough power I don't think to power that pump so I'm gonna run that through a, a relay I um, think that's it I've got some plumbing run here for that sink that's gonna go there uh, the AC lines come out this back wall the um, these are the signal lines that, that run between the outside air conditioner unit and the inside unit I was just wasn't long enough so I'm gonna have to end up cutting and splicing that and then I will run it with these lines tuck it all together make it look pretty I guess best I can um, oh yeah I did install a light out here so it kind of lights up kind of nice this was just an old piece of plastic trim and I just cut holes in it and put those same LED puck lights and run the wires all up along the back side of it. Turned out okay, can't really see it, so I guess it doesn't really matter. And then I put an auxiliary switch, so it'll also, it's a, we'll also run off the inside switch as well if we want. 
anyways that's about it let me know if you have any questions or comments thank you